Well, welcome back. We're glad you're here for session two where, where God calls me daily through his word and through baptism. And so we want to talk about this call a little bit deeper and get into that. But first, let me tell you, I don't know about you, but growing up, I had a lot of nicknames. A lot of people would call me, like, like now here at the church, people call me TK. All right. So that's one of the names I have. But when I was growing up, I wasn't so advanced in height. All right. And so I was a little shorter than everybody. And so back in the day, there was this show called Fantasy Island. And Fantasy Island had this, this little person uh, and his name was Tattoo. And so every time I would step up in, in baseball and I would step up to get in the box, people would start yelling, the ball, the ball, because Tattoo in the, in the show would say, the plane boss, the plane, right? When the plane came down to the island. And so they would, they would say that to me and kind of call me Tattoo was my nickname when I was a little bit shorter. As I got a little bit older, I was known as Little Kite because my brother was Kite. Um, Cause our last name's Kite Linger. And so we shortened that up. And so I was always Little Kite. So I always looked at as the younger brother, you know, my, my big bro who was the baseball player and, and really good at athletics. And then it was me, right? And then a little bit later, um, my nose was a little bit bigger than most everyone. So I, I ended up getting the nickname Nose. Now, I, I don't know, the Nose Nose, I guess. So, so that was another nickname I had. See, these names all mean something. They have some meaning behind it, right? And, and why we're called a certain thing. So maybe you have a nickname uh, or something like that. It'd be kind of fun to share with the people around you. But when we look at this, we, we look at the fact that God calls us a name as well. We are Christians. Christians means little followers of Christ. So Christ. Christ, right, is Jesus. Ian is, is just a connection to it. So um, I live in Iowa, so I'm, um, I'm an Iowan, right? And so wherever you live, you usually add a little extra at the end, and that becomes you belong to that state, right? So I live in that state. When God calls us into relationship with him, like we talked about in last session, we become Christians, right? We live in Christ. We're Christians. That's what it means to live in Christ, right? We are his child and we live in him. He calls us twice though. I mean, when we think about this thing of being called by God, he calls us twice. One in that relationship, which we talked about last time, right? So he's in a relationship with him. We have that through Jesus, right? Through his death and resurrection. And then he also calls us to action. We need to do something with that. God does not want a bookshelf faith. What I mean by that is, hey, look at my faith. I'm going to put it right up here on the bookshelf just so we can look at it. Isn't that kind of nice up there? I, I like that, right? No, he wants to take the faith down. And he wants us to do something with it, right? And we can do something with it because the power that he gives to us through our baptism and through his word. So when we get to the idea of how is God training you in the next two sessions after this, but right now let's just kind of hover down and kind of lean into this idea that he calls us through his word and through baptism. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, Romans chapter 10. So Romans 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans 10, 17. Romans is an awesome, awesome book to read. So, um, but in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says this. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. So faith comes by hearing it. And what are we hearing? We're hearing his word. This thing here, this thing called the Bible, right? This, this Bible, the God's word, the, the sacred text, the, the holy writings of Jesus, of God is in this. Do we love it? Is it, is it something that, that I cherish? That when I, when I come to Bible says, like, I want to know what God has to say. And, and we want to dig into it. See, through his word, it changes me because I hear what he has to say 
and I want to do what he has for me to do. And so we've got to realize that that's what's happening, that this faith that he is developing in us, see, faith is a verb, not just a noun. It says, I have faith, okay? So I have this thing, right? No, faith is an action that says, I need to go out and do something, because that's what love is. Love is an action as well. It's a verb, right? It's something that I'm going to do. I'm going to love. So faith should be that. I'm going to live it out. I'm going to let people know that I'm a Christian by how I act, what I say, what I do, what I look at, all those things. And if I'm struggling with some things, sins, I need to get back into God's word and have his word just kind of come over me. And I also have to remember this. I have been baptized into Christ. This baptism is a washing away. Right? And so I'm a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. And we find that in Ephesians. Find that in Ephesians. Let's hop over to Ephesians. You're in Romans, got the Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. Right? So Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4, 17 through 24. We're going to kind of dig in this and kind of figure it out what it's saying to us about this thing called baptism. Okay, so Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 to 24. It says, Now, this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. To the Gentiles, were, it's all about what they can accomplish and, and the knowledge that they can gain. And, and, and it's all about the stuff that they have. Don't walk that way, he says. Right? We are citizens of heaven because we are Christians, right? Christians, we belong to Christ. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, due to the hardness of their hearts. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. And see, when we sin, we kind of fall into that that category, right? It's all about me. It's what I want now to fulfill what I feel like I need right now. And when we do that, then our selfishness pushes God away, right? And so we got to bring it back saying, remember, this is the way the world works, but remember the way that God works and what God wants, so he wants to bring us back in to that relationship. And then he picks up in verse 20. This is the interesting part, right? Verse 20. But that is not the way you learned Christ, right? You know Jesus. Therefore, we walk different, think different, act different than what this world is doing. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. Jesus is the truth. He says, I am the way, the truth, the life, right? No one comes to the Father except through me. He is the way. And so our baptism then connects us to who Jesus is and what he has done. And this is what he wants us to do. Put off your old self, verse 22, which belongs to the former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. But see, we know Christ, we know what he wants us to do. You know, you, we know it. So when we do something wrong, we get that, that little feeling in your stomach. It's like, no, 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 no one's looking, right? Uh, whoo, got away with that one. But then we kind of think about it even more like, man, I shouldn't have done that. Right? We know those things. Why? The Spirit of God lives in you. And when did it come into you? It came into you through hearing the Word and through your baptism. You have the power of the God of the universe living inside of you. The relationship brings him in, and then he then directs action. 
So are you ready for the Holy Spirit to lead you? We need to put the old stuff off and put on the new stuff, the stuff that God wants us to do. Love, peace, patience, self-control. Does it sound familiar, right? He wants us to do that. So we take it off on a daily basis. Because some days, you know, I do pretty good. I stay pretty faithful. I always sin every day. But some days, you know, I'm not too bad of a guy. Some days, yeah, I'm not too good of a guy. Right? We're, we all fall into that trap. You see, faith, this, this line here of following Jesus. So if this is the line that says, I'm following Jesus, right? And, and but faith isn't always like that, is it? It's, it's something like this. Some days, yeah, man, I'm, I'm really riding high. It, it's going well. My relationship with him, I got it. It's going well. And some days, yeah, it ain't so hot. Right? It's just not going very well. So that's when the old self starts coming in. And, and, and here is where we start forgetting about this who I am, what God says. Maybe I start having doubts about myself and I start uh, thinking bad about myself and, and maybe I get a little more irritated with people. Uh, you name whatever it is for you, right? For you that, that causes you to sit there and go, you know what, I'm not living the way God wants me to live. But then sometimes, you know, our faith is, oh, man, I'm just, I'm just praising Jesus and, and everything's going all well. It's like that for the rest of your life. That's why we always have to go back to it's not about you. It's about what Jesus has done for you. So you take the old off. You put the new on. Forgiveness, love, grace has been given to you by Jesus. And then you go out in action and you live that in this world. That's what God calls us to do. He calls us into a relationship. He calls us through his word and his baptism to go out, to be his disciples. So let's take a look at Romans. We're gonna jump back over to Romans. So we are in Ephesians, go back into Romans where we were before, chapter 12, verses one and two. Love these verses, memorize these verses. These are great verses to remind yourself because of what Jesus has done for us, I shouldn't be embarrassed by it. I shouldn't sit there and go, you know, I don't want anybody else to know that I'm a Christian because, oh my, I might have to love them. Love them! That's what God calls us to do, right? The gospel changes us and it will change the people around us and it will change our world and does not our world need changing. That's our job as Christians to be out to show this other life that God has for us. So take a look at Romans chapter 12, one and two. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. In other words, live as if you know who Jesus is. That, that's all he's saying, right? Just, just to offer yourself as, you know what? If I play baseball, I'm gonna be a Christian who plays baseball. If I'm singing in the choir, I'm gonna be a Christian who's singing in the choir. If I'm on debate, I'm gonna be a Christian who is on the debate team. You see what I'm saying, right? We're a Christian first. That's my sacrifice to God. That's me saying, God, I love you. I have faith in you. I'm gonna trust you. And I'm gonna go and do these things. He doesn't say stop doing those things. He just says, do those things as a Christian. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you, by testing, may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. You see, this new self of us is just to live out what God wants us to live. That's the action of what God has already done for us. This action doesn't save me. This action doesn't get me into heaven better. This action isn't the one that forgives me. That's already been done through Jesus. This action is just living out what God has already done for us. 
So we have to remember that. Get into God's word, remember our baptism. And when this world starts throwing things at us, we stop. Illustration, uh, one of the pastors uh, that I know said this. So you got the culture and the world and all that stuff out there, and you got scripture. You have two choices. You look at scripture to interpret what's happening in this world, or do you let the culture and the world dictate how you view scripture? We always have to go this way. The word always has to interpret scripture, always has to interpret what's happening in this world. We have to know the scripture. We have to know God's word so we can live out in this world. So we don't conform to the patterns of this world, but renew ourselves. So we may know what's God's will and what's not God's will. That's this call that God has for us. And you get confused, go talk to somebody else. Go talk to another Christian. Because he's placed us surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. You're not alone in this. When God calls us in a relationship, he is with you, and he also brings other Christians along with you. Celebrate that. And together, we change the world because of what God is doing through us. So with that, just dwell on that. Think about that. In the next couple of sessions, we're going to be talking about how is he training us? What does he want us to do? What are some things he wants to kind of chip away at us so we can walk in action for him? So thanks for joining us today. And we'll see you next time for session three as we talk about him training us through Jesus. We'll see you next time. Bye.